I'll be sitting in, as I always am on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program, with my good friend and colleague, Douglas Winfrey. What's up, Douglas? Great to have you back on the show. I've got Thank one you. here that I got from uh, CNN. As soon as I saw this story, I thought immediate, uh, immediately of you. In fact, I emailed it to you. Gotta be you got skin. It. Yep. And it's a uh, headline of this uh, CNN story is, Something in your sunblock may be causing fertility problems. And this is a study from the National Institute of Health. It finds that chemicals in sunscreens and personal care products that filter out UV rays may lead to infertility issues among men. A uh, study followed 500 couples that was part of a larger study known as the Longitudinal Investigation of Fertility and the Environment. And the study looks at the role between environmental ke uh, chemicals and fertility. Uh, authors took urine samples from the couples and had them keep a journal until they had conceived or tried for 12 months. The couples who took the longest to conceive had something in common. BP-2 or 40H-BP, two UV filter chemicals found commonly in sunblocks and sunscreens. They say they were found in high concentrations in the male partner's urine, also used in moisturizers and shampoos. Uh, Jermaine Buck-Lewis, uh, lead author, says there hasn't been much work done in this area right now. It's thought that these chemicals are safe for use in preventing ionizing radiation and sunburn, but what about better health, she asks, and added that it's unclear exactly what role these chemicals may play in decreasing male fertility. So what can you do if you want to keep your cancer-free but are concerned about fertility issues, scientists say not much. There's no law what? that they say there's no law that requires manufacturers dis to disclose the chemicals that are in their products. They aren't on the ingredient list on the packaging. There don't you go. Don't use them. That's what you do. You yeah. don't use them. You know, what you're talking about is something called xenoestrogens. I know you yeah. and I have talked to, we talked about these things a lot. And there's all these, uh, there's all these chemicals that are found in, in skincare products, not just sunscreens, by the way, or sunblock, sunscreen chemicals, but also preservatives and fragrance have these xenoestrogenic properties. Uh, a lot of active ingredients can have xenoestrogenic properties. Xeno is just a fancy Latin term that means foreign. Like a, a xenophobe is somebody who's scared of foreigners. By the way, did you hear Sarah Palin's latest quote here? You, Sarah Palin, no. send immigrants back across the ocean to Mexico. I thought that was There you go. <laughs> but anyway, xenophobes are people who are afraid of immigrants. Xenophiles are people who like immigrants or foreigners. Uh, xenobiotics are foreign chemicals. And xenoestrogens are estrogen-like compounds that are not native to the human body, and there's lots of them, including the aforementioned sunblocks and sunscreens and fragrances and, and uh, perfumes and preservatives and sometimes even active ingredients. They act like estrogen, and estrogen's a birth control. That's, what, that's what's in most people's birth control pills is estrogen. So these estrogenic compounds, whether they're sunblocks and, uh, I'm sorry, sunscreens, or whether they're perfumes or whether they're preservatives, can indeed have these anti-fertility effects, these estrogenic effects. And what's even worse, Douglas, is they can have feminizing effects on men and they can have extra feminizing effects on women. That means that explains breath. a lot of what I've been seeing down at the beach. <laughs> Maybe. I know exactly what you're talking about. I've seen it too. And that's not, you know, it sounds kind of funny, but that thing that happens to men with the, you know, the man boob thing, you know what I'm talking about? The, the, the guys that Those need are the called man, boobs. You know about the man's ear, right? Yeah. You heard about the man's ear? That's a sign that a guy's estrogen is getting out of whack. A male infertility, erectile dysfunction, libido issues, all, even prostate issues can all be signs that a man's estrogen is being thrown off following exposure to xenoestrogens like sunblocks and sunscreens. And as far as the scientist goes who says not much we can do, you better believe there's something we can do, and that is not use toxic sunscreens. They say, well, I can't go I can't go out in the sun without my sunscreen. Oh, yeah, you can because you can use something called a sunblock, which has no xenoestrogenic properties and won't affect your fertility and won't affect your manliness and won't affect your estrogen levels either. So hang tight, and we'll tell you what that is. When we come back for more break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie radio program. 831 685 1080 is our priority line number. Got a couple lines open for you there. You can also call us toll free at 888 379 2552. 888 379 2552. We're coming back at you with more good health information, and we'll tell you about the options to toxic estrogenic sunscreens that you can use if you're out in the sun. We'll tell you all about that when we come back from our break. 
So before we went to break, we were talking about sunblocks and sunscreens. I know you're probably getting sick of hearing about this, Doug, but I'm going to say it again because we've got all these new listeners. You don't want to use sunscreens, first of all. They're nasty chemicals. Not only are they xenoestrogens, not only do they act like estrogen, but they're also cyto, that means cell, cytotoxic. They're toxic to cells. And I don't know how a dermatologist or a doctor or healthcare professional can ever recommend that somebody smears on a cell toxic cream, especially when you have an alternative called zinc oxide. And not only is zinc oxide not toxic, but zinc oxide actually heals the skin. Zinc oxide will heal diaper rash, it'll heal burn, it'll heal a sunburn in addition to protecting you from a sunburn. And of course, it is non-toxic. It is a source of zinc. Zinc is very important for the healing process. And you can actually dab your zinc oxide on blisters or, or any kind of uh, eczema or any other kind of a skin wound or skin trauma, and it will protect you from the sun to boot. And then there's the vegetable connection, which is my favorite way to protect the skin, making sure you're eating your brightly colored vegetables, your reds and your greens and your blues and your purples, all of which contain nutrients and substances that protect the plant from the sun and can protect your skin from the sun too. There's no need ever, ever, ever for a toxic sunscreen. Doug, do you know they, that even dermatologists will tell uh, parents not to put sunscreens on baby skin? Yeah, you had said that before. Right. And also, if you read the label, you know, it it tells you, gives you the poison control number if you end up ingesting it by accident. Right. Right. I mean, if you you can't eat this stuff, why would you want to put it on your skin? I mean, your skin's like a big sponge. It soaks everything in. Especially especially these xenoestrogenic sunscreens, which are fat-soluble and tend to penetrate really effectively into the skin, into at least into the lower into the levels underneath the skin surface. There's no need for these suns. You know why you know why they still use them? Because they're cheap. They're cheap to make. They're not cheap to us to buy. They're cheap to make. And the profit margins on these things are really, really high. And in any case, has anybody noticed that melanoma rates are increasing? They're not decreasing. And skin cancer rates are, are increasing and not decreasing. And that's despite the fact that we're all using these sunscreens uh, like they're going out of style. And now doctors tell you to use even uh, use S- higher SPFs. If you use a higher SPF, all that means is, for the most part anyway, you're exposing yourself to even more toxicity and more deadly chemicals. My opinion stayed the heck away from those things. You know, when I ordered the sunscreen chemicals into my pharmacy or when I was using a sunscreen chemicals in my formulations, my prescription formulations, I was always astounded that there was a skull and crossbones on the bottle, as in poison. And I was making the stuff, making products with it, which I, of course, no longer do. Anyway, use sunblocks, use zinc oxide. You can also use titanium dioxide, but you're not going to get the same healing benefits as the zinc oxide, although even titanium dioxide is not as, not as deadly toxic as some of these other sunscreen chemicals. And of course, using nutrition is always, is always going to be your best strategy. Not just the veggies, not just the colored veggies, but vitamin C and vitamin E are protective, uh, or skin are protective against the sun. Uh, zinc can be protective against the sun as well. Lots of good nutritional strategies. There's always good nutritional strategies when it comes to taking care of your body. And that's what we're all about here on the Dead Doctors don't lie program. All right, we're going to take a break and come back with your phone calls at 831-685-1080 or 888-379-2552, 831-685-1080 or 888-379-2552. I'm Pharmacist Ben along with Doug Winfrey sitting in for Dr. Wallach. Today, you're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program and we'll be back right after this. And uh, what do you say? Go to the phones, Douglas? Let's do it. All right. Let's, let's head to Louisiana call. and Sharon. You're on with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Yo, Sharon, what's going on? Um, hi, uh, Dr. Ben. I have um, several issues. I, I'm menopausal, and the uh, doctor wanted to put me on Wellbutrin, and I told him, no, thank you. I'd rather suffer. Um, <laughs> he wanted to put you on Wellbutrin, which is an antidepressant, and did he say why? Are you depressed? Uh, well, it comes... One minute I'm happy, one minute I'm sad, the okay. next minute I'm crying, the next minute okay. I'm angry. So your emotions it's are kind of that. kind of moving up and down, sort of thing, right? Right, and, it, and, it, and it's all day, and it's 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 awful feeling, and and then I have uh, like my left leg. It's you know if you sit for a while and that that pin that that feel it cold feels. 
Okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, Your body. All right. Well, you want to you want to take care of some of these menopausal symptoms? They're all connected, by the way. Here's the thing about I want menopause. to take care of all of them. You can do it all in one fell swoop, my dear. Here's the here's the thing about menopausal symptoms, whether it's the insomnia or the anxiety or the strange moods that go up and down or or the weight gain or or, or any of the or any of this, the hot flashes, any of the things that we we consider to be part and parcel of the menopausal uh, of the uh, menopausal time of life. All of these are nothing more than the manifestation of a stressed out body. Now, I'm not talking necessarily about mental stresses and emotional stresses. I'm talking about the raw physiologic stress that's associated with blood sugar changes, the uh, hormonal changes, and the wrong kinds of food. So here's what you need to do. And this is for anybody out there listening who's dealing with menopausal issues, no matter what they may be. Step number one, you must, must, must stabilize your blood sugar. Keep your blood sugar from going up and down and up and down. That's a major stress on the body. Body. Sugar itself is a major stress on the body, and I don't want to be one of those guys who beats up on sugar. It's too easy to do. Sure, but rest assured, the fact of the matter is, is sugar is a toxin. After you have a certain amount of it, a very small amount, which your body needs, the rest of it is a poison. It is a toxin, and you need we all need to be staying away from it as best as possible. But you can't wean yourself off of it, and you can't use willpower because the, the drive for sugar is built into our brain. So the way you wean yourself off of sugar is is by using more butter and by using more protein. Get yourself on the new Slender FX. By the way, Doug, you know there's a new Slender FX out. It's got more whey protein in it. Use the Slender FX two or three times a day and then use it with, uh, make sure you're using lots of delicious butter on everything. Put butter on vegetables and put butter on toast if you're eating toast and on your rice. Wherever you put, uh, whatever you're going to, um, whatever you want to put butter on, use lots of butter. I love butter with eggs personally. Uh, so using butter and using, uh, and using uh, more protein, and then make sure you're using your ultimate essential fatty acids, which are part of the Healthy Start Pack, which can also have a tremendous effect on stabilizing blood sugar, especially the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, which has your B1, uh, vitamin B1 and vitamin B3, both of which are very important for sugar metabolism. So getting on, the sweet, uh, getting on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, eating more protein, eating more butter, and then also using your sweeties can help stabilize your blood sugar. That's step number one for all menopausal health issues. In fact, you guys, if you just simply weaned yourself off of sugar and reduced your sugar, you will notice immediately that your menopausal symptoms start to diminish. If you, if you go as far as fasting, as laying off food entirely, maybe using your Swear of V, uh, just doing Swear of V for a whole day, do a Swear of V cleanse, a one or two day Swear of V cleanse. In those one or two days, guaranteed, you'll notice that your menopausal symptoms start to subside. The second thing you want to do in addition to stabilizing your blood sugar is reduce, your, uh, reduce the amount of uh, calories you eat and reduce your intake of foods that mess up your digestive system and especially make sure you're on good bacteria. You know what? There's a really important and underappreciated relationship between menopause, estrogen, and good bacteria in the gut. Hang tight. I'll tell you what, what I mean when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben along with Doug Winfrey. You're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie radio program and we'll be back with more good health information right after this break. Don't go away. We are back on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program. I'm Pharmacist Ben along with Doug Winfrey. We're talking to Sharon in Louisiana. Where are you in Louisiana, Sharon? Whereabouts? Monroe. Monroe, Louisiana. All right. So here's the scoop on menopause. Everybody out there who's dealing with menopausal issues or you know somebody or you're living somebody with somebody who's got anxiety or jitteriness or insomnia or hot flashes or well, pe- leg pain, as Sharon was explaining, any of the any of the unpleasantries associated with menopause. Number one, we need to regard it as a, a sign of a body in distress, especially sugar distress, eating more protein, using butter on all your foods, using the Slender FX, the Healthy Start Pack, and the Sweeties are great ways to stabilize your blood sugar. And even if you just do that, and even if you just fast, take a day off from food using your Swear of V, do a one or two day Swear of V cleanse, you'll notice that your menopausal symptoms subside. The second thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're staying away from any foods that throw off your digestive system, anything that causes gas or bloating or constipation, any of those kinds of foods you should be staying away from. And if you can jot down all the foods you eat and then how your digestive system responds to those foods, I call that a food diary, that will be helpful. And then there's something called probiotics, good bacteria. A lot of folks don't realize this, but one of the most important roles, one of the most important functions of good bacteria is to help us process estrogen. When we don't have the right bacteria, we got the wrong, uh, 
ratios or proportions of bacteria in our gut, estrogen processing gets thrown off and that can wreak all kinds of hormone havoc on the body, including menopausal symptoms. So getting on the bioluminightly essence is very important for menopausal, for menopausal women, perimenopausal women. Uh, also using fermented foods can be helpful too. Uh, maybe three capsules in the morning, three capsules at night of the bioluminightly essence in addition to making sure you're eating fermented foods. And then the last step for dealing with all menopausal issues is to make sure you're slowing down any kind of adrenal, uh, hyperactive adrenal, act, uh, act, hyperactive adrenal, uh, adrenal act activity, too much adrenal processing, too much cortisol or stress hormone. And the best way to do that is to practice slow, deep breathing. And by slow, deep breathing, I mean sitting on the couch and taking 15 seconds on an inhale, 15 seconds on an exhale. Belly goes out as you inhale, belly comes in as you exhale. Between those three steps, working on blood sugar, using all the blood sugar nutrients that we just talked about, working on your digestive system, making sure you're on the bioluminightly essence, staying away from problem foods, and fasting and practicing your deep breathing techniques, I guarantee you 100% you're going to start to notice a reduction in your menopausal symptoms. You may even completely entirely eliminate your menopausal symptoms as well. And thanks so much for your call. Sharon from Louisiana, appreciate it. Let's see who's next on the line, Doug. All right, let's head to Florida. And Mary Ann, you're on with Pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Yo, Mary Ann, what's up? Mary Ann? Mary Ann? Hello? Hi, Mary Ann. Oh, okay. Hey. Uh, sorry. I, um, um, I'm calling about my mother. She's 93 years old, and she's diabetic. And um, I, she does take the metformin occasionally. I try not to have to give her it's, it's, whatever. Anyway, sorry. I, uh, nice. She has been taking Sweeties and the uh, Selenium, okay, uh, ultra, ultra, Ultimate Selenium, which uh, has the vanadium and the uh, chromium. However, and a few other things that from another place that has a little of the chromium vanadium. My question really is about the... Um, uh, toxic effect of how much chromium and how much vanadium can I give her well, without being toxic? I, I don't. Where did you hear that there was a toxic effect on those? You'd have to I swallow haven't them. Really. Uh, don't, don't worry about no, it. No, I wouldn't worry about it. Everything that. has a limit, and I don't want to. Well, yeah, that, no, that's true. That's you, you know, obviously that's true. That's I, I'm not disagreeing with you there. But you'd have to take a lot of chromium. You could. No, no, you can certainly take 600 or 800 micrograms of chromium every day. You can take six sweeties a day, no problem. Two, two, three times a day, that's not a problem at all. You can even take three, three times a day, probably. That's not a problem either. That's I wouldn't sweeties, worry about that. Huh? Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. Two, three times a day, six a day, that's not a problem at all. Uh, and the selenium, you're very smart about the selenium, whoever told you that, and I forgot to mention that to Patricia, or to Sharon earlier. Uh, selenium is, is wonderful for the blood sugar, for stabilizing blood sugar, and it's also important for menopause and for estrogenic issues as well, the ultimate selenium. Now, selenium is one that you can take too much of, uh, but you can still take easily 800 micrograms. I think Dr. Wallach takes a, a full milligram of the selenium a day. Correct me if I'm wrong, Douglas, but I know he takes a lot of it. But certainly you could take 800 micrograms no problem on the selenium, although that is one that I would be a little bit more careful of. So could I, could she take the three of the uh, ultimate selenium also then? Because sure. Because that has the vanadium and the chromium also in there. So I don't think so. Is there selenium, is there vanadium and chromium in the selenium? In the yes, ultimate the sel vanadium, there's uh, 75 mics and... Um, in the ultimate selenium? Yes. And chromium, there's 100 mics for each capsule. In the ultimate selenium product? Yes. I have a bottle right in front of me. And you're looking at it as we speak. Well, you, yes. you're, you know more about it than I do. That's great. I didn't know that. Um, now, you don't want to take... I'm concerned. I don't want to go... No, no, it. listen. Here's the deal, ma'am. And, and your question, I understand your question, and I get it all the time. Nutrition is not drugs, okay? There's no... At worst, you'll get an upset stomach, okay? That's the, when we're talking toxicity here, we're talking upset stomach. That's your toxicity. This is not drug toxicity. A, a prescription drug is a poison, and so you have to control the amount that you take. A nutri nutrient is not a poison. Right? And it's true you don't want to overdose on it, of course. You don't want to take crazy amounts of it. But you're, what we're talking about when we talk about overdosing, we're talking maybe a little bit of a bellyache. Or if you were to do it for a really long time with something like vitamin A, which is stored in the body, you might get a headache or you might get um, a little jaundice or something along those lines. I'm not telling you to do it, but it's not like when you take a prescription drug and you take an extra milligram or, or, or uh, extra couple of hundred micrograms of a prescription drug. Now you're talking deadly. 
Now you're talking toxic. That's not how nutrition works. Does that make sense, ma'am? I'm not, I'm not recommending you take too much, but I'm also not. T I'm telling you, you don't have to really, you know, brain damage whether you can take an extra hundred micrograms here or an extra hundred micrograms there. It's not really the end of the world if she takes 800 instead of 900. And I'm looking here at the supplement facts on the Ultimate Selenium, and uh, you're absolutely 100% correct. There's uh, there is uh, uh, chromium as well as selenium in both of those. I'm sorry, there's chromium as well as vanadium in the uh, selenium product. Actually, you know what? I don't see any. Do you, you see vanadium in there, ma'am? Oh, yeah, there it is. I vanadium. Them. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, you just taught me something new. I appreciate that. <laughs> so that's good to know. So, so, I, so yeah. my question is, could, she, could possibly, like on a, a, a day that she's really going to be eating a lot, take two sweeties yes. and one selenium three times yeah. a day? Or is yes. That no, don't worry about it. Like I say, the toxicity and side effect will be a bellyache. You're not going to, it's not like something dramatic is going to happen to her. Okay. Well, I okay. appreciate that. That's, sure, that was my sure. question. <laughs> sure, no problem. Th and thanks for your call. That's All so right. important, Doug. You know, we, nutrients do have these kinds of properties where they can change the biochemistry of the body, but the good thing about nutrition is you can't really do much damage if you take an extra pill here or there. You take an extra 100 or 200 micrograms. I'm not recommending that anybody does that, but it's not like the therapeutic window of these things is like prescription drugs. With prescription drugs, if you take an extra 100 micrograms, you can end up in the hospital. If you take an extra couple pills, you can, uh, worse can happen to you. And that's the beauty of good nutrition, is you get the same kind of effects in terms of stabilizing your biochemistry, in terms of feeling better, not even the same kind of effects. You get better effects, and you don't have to deal with that toxicity or that narrow therapeutic window where the beneficial dose or the recommended dose is really close to the toxic dose, like with medications. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, along with Doug Winfrey, sitting in for Doc today, 831-685-1080 is our priority line number. Who's next on the line, Douglas? All right, let's head to California, and Jane, you're on with Pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hey, Jane. Hi, doctor. How are you? I'm good. What's going on? Well, I'm a new customer to the um, Tangerine. Tangerine the Dream? Beyond, yeah, the Beyond ten, Tangy Tangerine. Yes, ma'am. And um, I'm trying to follow its direction to take um, that's appropriate for my body weight and everything. I was doing that um, for a couple weeks, and I was noticing that my face was turning red as if I was having a... Um, rosette, you're getting a flush? You're getting a, and it's you're getting a flush. constantly red. Okay, hang nice. tight. I'll tell you about that. That's from the when you drank the Beyond Tangy Tangerine? Yes, sir. Okay, it sounds like you might be dealing with the niacin flush, but hang on. Uh, don't go away. we got to take a break, and we'll come back and answer your phone calls or answer your question, and we'll take your phone calls as well, 831-685-1080 or 888 I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to the Dead Doctors Don't Lie radio program on the CBS radio network. We are back on the Dead Doctors Don't Lie program. We're talking to Jane. Jane, you're uh, doing your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and you get a little flush or heat in your cheeks. Is that what you're saying, or yellow well, uh, yeah, yeah. color? And what I've noticed is it's prevented me from taking it anymore. So I, I want to get back at Here's what you want to do. Come, yes, here's what you want to do. And I, I'm thinking it sounds to me like the niacin flush. Now, it could be an allergic reaction, I suppose, but I, I don't think that's what it is. It sounds like a, the niacin flush. And if, you, if that's the case, there's, there's a couple things you want to do. First of all, if you take your Beyond Tangy Tangerine with food, you should be able to reduce, reduce that, kind of, uh, that kind of effect. And also, if you dilute your Beyond Tangy Tangerine, in other words, you put it, uh, do a, a smaller dose, but you drink it throughout the day. Are you drinking it all at once? I'm putting it in water. And, um, and, drink, and guzzling it down, drinking it down real quickly? No, not guzzling, but I'm, okay. I am putting the, two, the full two scoops. And, Cut your um, dose way back. Cut your dose way, 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 way back and do as much and then start to raise your dose again. So cut your dose to maybe a teaspoon uh, and then work yourself back up again. See if that makes a difference, okay? okay. And, then the, and then the third thing is, is that if it is the niacin flush, your body gets used to the niacin flush as you build up your niacin levels. So it'll, if that's indeed what it is and it's what it sounds like, you're gonna, it'll start to go away over to the course of time as you build up your niacin. Usually when we need niacin, which is what causes that flush, our body will absorb it much quick, much more quickly, and that's true in general. When the body is deficient in something, it tends to absorb it real 
quickly, something mm. that it needs. And that might be what's occurring to you. So number one, take it with food. Number two, reduce your dose and then build your dose back up again. And then number three, rest assured that you're probably, if it is the niacin flush, you'll probably get used to it over the course of time. And that will no longer occur once you meet your body's niacin needs. Hope that helps. Thanks so much for your call. Appreciate Thank it. You. Appreciate it, Jane. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Okay, ma'am. Take care. Bye-bye. Who's next on the line, Doug? All right. Let's head to Florida. And, Nicole, you're on with pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Hi. Um, thank you for taking my call. I have sure. my father, who's 66 years old, with a hypoxic um, brain injury from a... Yeah, came you know what, ma'am? I'm, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm having a hard time hearing you. Can you can you get take off take me off speaker there? Okay. My dad came into the hospital for with pneumonia and had some type of cardiac arrest which now he has um, hypoxic injury, brain injury. Okay. Right. He said the only portion of his brain that's working is his brain stem. So he keeps oh, just spiking that's temperatures. Terrible. How My old is he? Is this, oh, he's How 65. Is... Okay. Well, that's tragic. Uh, now, you see, he's in the hospital, and it's going to be very difficult to give him what he needs to get, get in the hospital. Hospitals are not places, you know, people, get, people die in hospitals. I worked in hospitals, and they're awful. Now, if you have a true, I in the hospital, so I know. But you know what I'm talking about, right? Do it. They're willing to get. They are willing. Get them on the BTT, the Beyond Tang Tangerine Stat. You know what that means, right? Stat Beyond right away. Tangerine. Get them on the Beyond Tangy Tangerine right away. It's liquid. It's B vitamins. They'll go right to work, and they'll make a significant difference if a difference can be made. So get them on the BT, Beyond Tangy Tangerine right away. Uh, you might want to throw in the um, the uh, uh, Beyond OsteoFX. That'll get them the magnesium. Magnesium is also important for the cardiovascular and the cerebrovascular system, the brain brain vessel, brain blood vessel system, uh, and also important for the heart. Sorry? It's called Beyond Osteo FX. Both the Beyond Osteo FX and the uh, Beyond Tangy Tangerine will give him quick results. They're liquid nutrients. They're high in the water soluble stuff, the electrolytes, the B vitamins, and the vitamin C. And so they'll go right to work. And you're going to want to start to be building up in a more long term fashion, and that would be your ultimate essential fatty acids, probably your ultimate selenium as well. Uh, the ultimate essential fatty acids are very important, but they're more long term. Um, and then that would be three capsules, if you can, three capsules a couple of times a day or th even three times a day. All of this will be found in what we call the Healthy Start Pack. I'm sure you've heard of the Healthy Start Pack. That's the yeah, Beyond Osteo Effect. So is are you doing the Healthy Start Pack brain one she was telling me recommended? You could do that, too. Yes, ma'am. You could do that, too, the, the Healthy Brain Pack, too. Uh, either way, it's the, those three main products, the Beyond OsteoFX, the Beyond, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, and the Ultimate EFAs, although the Ultimate EFAs are more long-term, the Beyond Tangy Tangerine, you'll notice really good results, and you'll notice some pretty, uh, really quick results, and then you'll also notice those quick results with the Beyond OsteoFX, liquid magnesium, and then also liquid calcium. All right, I hope that helps, and God bless you. That's just that's terrible to hear. And if you want to stay out of the hospital, the best way to stay out of the hospital, the best way to stay away from the doctor, the best way to keep yourself from interfacing with a modern medical model that could care less about us at the end of the day is to get yourself on a nutritional supplement program. And even better, start yourself a business that features good nutrition, that features a good nutritional supplement program. And that's what Longevity is all about. Thanks for listening, folks. I'm Pharmacist Ben for Doug Winfrey, for Dr. Wallach, for all the folks at the ZBS Radio Network. Have yourselves a wonderful, spectacular day. We'll talk y'all later folks. Bye for now.